Hi, and welcome to Gloria Deo Academy, raising lifelong worshipers, lifelong learners, and lifelong servants. We're going to be talking about a heart checkup when it comes to habits and wills, and this applies both to our students and to us as parents. I'm also going to be doing some excerpts out of the book For the Children's Sake by Susan Schaefer McCauley, and she takes a lot of her ideas also from Charlotte Mason. So if you have any sort of background reading in Charlotte Mason, you will appreciate some of these ideas too. In the book, For the Children's Sake, the author describes different kinds of habits that we want to develop in our students and our children. And some of those listed are the habit of attention or concentration, a habit of truthfulness, a habit of self-control, and a habit of unselfishness. And specifically, I want to talk about the habit of self-control. Because when we get to this time in the school year, you know, there, it's almost like there's no surprises. You know, we know what to expect for our different subjects, be it Latin or history or um, English and so on. Our, our routines are set. Our teachers know our students and our students know our teachers and they know what work is to be expected. So then it's so um, tempting for students to fall into, at least my children <laughs> is what I've experienced, for my, my kids to fall into a, yeah, I know I, I should do that, but I really don't want to do that. And I find myself in a position of needing to um, do a heart checkup and really make sure I'm parenting, intentionally parenting their uh, the battle of the wills that they have inside them. And this relates back to the authors and of the book, Her Habit of Self-Control. And I'll read, she says, we need to quietly and cheerfully push the selfish I want out of the center of our lives. The question should not be, what do I want? But what do I think is right in this instance? This habit helps children cope with their wills. And a great example for school that she lists, says, I can see you don't feel like working on your arithmetic or math but it is your duty to try as hard as you can. When 20 minutes are up, you can stop. If you finish the page sooner, you'll be able to go and play with the Legos or for us, play outside. So, and this little bit of exercise, this idea of when I have a student who is maybe a little burned out and not motivated and struggling with the battle of the wills of I want to do something versus what I know is right to do in this moment, because if, if a parent is asking me, if my co-teacher on home day is saying, it's time to do math, I need you to work on math, then the right thing to do is to obey and work on my math. Sometimes I see that my children, they need we need to utilize a timer. And that means like the right thing to do is to work on math like I've asked you, or your history, or your writing composition. Set a timer. Work for 20 solid minutes, work as hard as you can for X amount of time, and then take a break and come back to that if we need to. Sometimes it's helpful with lower grades if you give them ample amount of time where you know you're giving them more time than they need. For example, 30 minutes for a math facts page. And then if they finish in 10 minutes, fantastic. You have 20 minutes. Like I'm not going to take away that time from you. You worked hard and you you worked well. Quality of work matters too. Um, you work well, then you can you can have the, the last whatever minutes you have left on that timer, they're yours. They're free time for you. You do with them as you like, so long as you're not disrupting any of your um, siblings. And so I love this example that she has of it's so um, just very much real life of what I often encounter on my home days with my kids of battling their wills and overcoming creating a good habit of self-control. And it says, she also says, it is possible to help the child, to help him to be the sort of mature adult who knows that he can choose to do what he doesn't always feel like doing. Um, it helps us to accept our own weakness, our own needs and limitations. We have to operate within the limits of what is possible. I will never be perfect. And she's saying, um, you know, our attempts at doing this will never be perfect because we, of course, we are human. But she goes on, but it is wonderful not to be merely swept along by feelings and circumstances. And if you were um, 
able to come to Keith McCurdy speak, one of the things he did this beautiful example, and he did it for our students, our upper grade students on campus as well that day. And he he discussed kind of this idea of that our feelings cannot discern what is true from what is not true. Meaning, it, and he used the example of dreams that we have we have bad dreams or our dreams generate feelings of fear in us, but that's not reality. But our emotions cannot discern truth. And so I, this is very similar to me because it is a little bit like just because we don't feel like doing our schoolwork in the moment or we don't feel like battling our kids, if it's us and our hearts, we just don't want to have that battle um, at this time of day or whatever it is that we shouldn't be um, swept along by our feelings or our circumstances. So when you come to one of these battles, if you come to one of these in your home days where you are um, doing more of a heart checkup rather than an academic checkup, it is it's so important to stop and consider how to cultivate this habit of self-control, how to help our kids overcome their own selfish wills and instead um, learn to choose to do what's right. One of my favorite parenting questions is just stopping and asking my kids, okay, but what's the right thing to do right now? And they, and I don't think they like that question very much because it just puts a stop to whatever's going on. And I, and you can see when the gears change, you know, on their, the look on their faces, their way that they're thinking, and they're just, okay, I'm going to go do the right thing now. And, you know, it almost, not that it, ends a conversation but whatever conversation is happening whatever dialogue is is going on it sets it back on the right path and back on the right track just to ask my kids okay but what is the right thing to do right now you know and that's for sibling squabbles and you know uh, not wanting to do schoolwork it's for all the things it's just a great thing to just come back to every time of what is the right thing to do? And of course, where do we get that? How do we know what is the right thing to do? And that is the word of God and being led and focused by scripture. When I think about my students growing up to be mature young adults and their ability to overcome their selfish wills and instead do what they know is right, um, it, it brings me back to this paragraph that the, the author spoke about. And I'll read it. It says, We accept that nothing is perfect, but we try to get our priorities right. We are ready to take time and trouble to see that our children aren't swept off in a roaring tide. But we want more than that. We pray for a person who is like the individual mentioned in Psalm 1. He has grown like an oak tree by a stream. Storms may roar. A branch or two may snap. But the oak stands firmly grounded, so much so that small creatures seek shelter therein. There is no one method to achieve such a mature person. There is no perfect or complete situation. We must pray for the individual, pray for wisdom, open our eyes, and choose priorities. We must not only talk, we have to serve, give, and be willing to live with the children. We nurture with life. And so I think about my uh, my children growing up, our students growing up and, and graduating and moving on. And to not be swept away by the tides or blown by the winds, but that they will be able to stand firm. Like it says, Psalm 1 verse 3 says, That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. And in order for my children to get there, that also means I need to be giving and serving alongside them and also showing them that I'm in this with them. And I, too, as a mom, have to overcome my selfish wills and choose to do what is right for the day. And um, whatever that is that the Lord has put in front of me and, and given to me for my hands to work on for the day. I hope that this was helpful and encouraging to you. If you have any questions or would like to reach out, you can email me at armor, A-R-M-O-U-R, at gloriadeoacademy.net, and I will be happy to hear from you. In the meantime, keep pursuing truth, goodness, and beauty. Thanks, everyone.